Hi everybody, Joel Hughes here from Newbie Book Writer. And in this video, I wanna talk about an issue I hear from time to time made by aspiring authors. It's a belief and an attitude that it always hits me as misguided, a bit naive, or even a bit arrogant. It's the attitude that many, many aspiring authors hold that says, I will only get a publishing deal by a known book publisher or it's nothing. So in this video, I wanna explore that attitude and well, sort of blow up that attitude and hopefully set you free to another option and a vision, one that I think is far better for most first time or aspiring authors. Now, what finally provoked me to do this video on this particular topic came by way of a podcast I recently heard a few days ago by a great online coach, teacher, and marketer. Uh, he's not one of the big old names out there like Gary Vaynerchuk or Seth Godin, but this guy still has a significant following, like almost 25,000 on his YouTube channel, which is no small number. And no, I'm not gonna tell you who he is because I respect him and I don't want this video to impact him negatively in any way. Okay, okay, fine, I'll tell you who he is. His name is Graham Cochran. And if you're into making online courses, growing a passive income business, email marketing, all that stuff, then I highly recommend you check him out. Okay, so in this podcast I heard, Graham was talking about his new book. In fact, it's his first book ever. It's probably going to be awesome, but he said something in passing that struck me the wrong way. This is early April, 2021, when I heard this just a few days ago, and he said that he sent his manuscript to his, his uh, new publisher and hopefully his book will come out sometime next year. Hopefully. I stopped the podcast and thought, what? That sucks. Knowing Graham, his book's probably awesome and I want it now and I'm sure tons of people do. Now, he could publish that same book in the next few months, but he went the route of a traditional publisher and it's gonna take a long time. And that's one of the issues I wanna talk about, one of the big cons of traditional publishing. I also wanna explore some of those misguided or even naive or even arrogant assumptions a lot of aspiring authors often make when it comes to getting a book published. And for the record, one of my books is published by a traditional publisher, and I'll share more about that in a little bit. But I wanna talk about what I call the golden ticket trap, okay? Many, many aspiring or first-time authors think that Getting their manuscript accepted by a big traditional publisher is the golden ticket to ease, fame, and fortune. So let's explore that attitude and these assumptions, uh, three in particular. First, it seems easier. It seems a lot easier to just write your manuscript, send it off to an agent or a publisher, and then in time it turns into a beautiful book for sale on bookshelves across the country. They will edit it and polish it up. They will do the internal layout. They will do the cover design. They will contact the retailers, do the mass printings, get it on the shelves and promote it. Easy, right? Second, it seems more respectable. Getting published is that professional validation most of us writers crave because most of us struggle with self-doubt and what's known as the imposter syndrome, which is basically ourselves telling ourselves that we are not really real writers or authors until validated by others in the industry. So getting published by a publishing house feels like proof to you and to the world, mainly your parents and your friends, right? That you're good enough and that, yeah, you're a real author. Third, traditional publishing seems more profitable. If you self-publish, isn't that first money out of your own pocket? And then aren't you just limited to however big your following is? What if you have no following? We assume that an established publisher will blow you up and get you in bookstores across the country, maybe the world. And I know, I know, many aspiring authors think that once the right person sees their amazing manuscript, everyone's going to swoon over your work and it's going to get passed up the ladder to the top of the publishing company, which will then result in a fat contract, book tours, fame, and the publisher is going to blow you up into the next J.K. Rowling. I know, I've been there too. In fact, I still, still feel that way with pretty much every book that I write. And I think there's some healthy optimism there, so I don't want to squash that, okay? But the common attitude that we're looking at, these assumptions are, one, it seems easier, two, more respectable, and three, more profitable. Now, I do want to be clear that this is true for some people, but not most, and not most first-time authors. Let's look at the reality. 
And remember, I'm going to try to show you a better way, a more hopeful way, a more profitable way toward the end of this video. But for most aspiring authors, this game plan we just looked at is more or less a pipe dream. I do love that optimism in your own work and your own dreams. Don't ever lose that belief in yourself and in your dream. But most aspiring authors who see no other route to publishing, they just don't know any better. But the book publishing world, like so many other industries, is radically changing due to the internet and new technologies that take the power from a few select gatekeepers, and it's putting that power into the hands of the average person and the consumer. And this is known as disruptive technologies because they disrupt, or in many cases, blow up the traditional way of doing things. We can see the classic example of Blockbuster Video, if you remember them. If not, God bless you and just Google it. But who disrupted them? Netflix, and now all the other video on demand streaming services. How about the taxi cab industry? Who disrupted them? Uber, then Lyft, and now the others. How about the hotel industry? Who disrupted them? Airbnb. I'm learning this right now also in another industry too, the film industry. My wife and I produce a documentary film that's won a bunch of awards in film festivals around the country. It's called A Brave Hope, coming out later. And it's about my wife's life and journey with breast cancer. With independent filmmaking, as with book publishing, you can go the traditional route of getting picked up by a distribution company, or you can self do a self-distribution route. I would say 99% of filmmakers long for acceptance by a traditional film distribution company, but like book publishing, many of these companies are predatory in nature, offer terrible terms, and never share a dime with you on the movie sales. We had a couple offers by some distributors, but ultimately we turned them down for many of the same negative reasons that we're learning in this video. But like Blockbuster, like the taxi cab industry, like the hotel industry, and like the traditional movie distribution companies, in the book publishing world, there are new technologies, new players on the field who are offering better alternative models for most people. And they are proven by consumer demand. This would be, of course, self-publishing. But I want to look deeper at those three assumptions about traditional publishing. That is, number one, it seems easier. Two, it seems more respectable. And three, it seems more profitable. So is it easier? I would say probably not. This is the myth of the golden ticket where you just hand off your manuscript and everyone else handles the rest and they're all working to catapult you to fame and fortune, right? Now, there is some truth to the handoff and having the publisher do all the heavy lifting, but it comes at a steep price. Here's a simple chart showing you the traditional publishing route. It starts with the author uh, either writing a complete manuscript or a portion of one, like a few chapters. Then they need to create a marketing proposal and try to sell the idea of their book, and then they try to pitch it to literary agents. And this all takes time. If an agent accepts your book idea or proposal, they'll then pitch it to the publishers they work with. The book publishers are like the gatekeeper. And in most cases, you need an agent to get access to them. Now, keep in mind that uh, agents are getting pitched hundreds of book proposals every month. Let's say they choose 25 manuscripts that month. They will then pitch it to the publisher. This is not a guarantee that a publisher will even pick up your manuscript. So out of the 25, they may get five books accepted by publishers. This is especially difficult for first-time authors or authors who don't yet have any kind of significant following. Uh, the diagram here shows the fil this filtering process. Remember, publishers are for-profit companies, and if they don't think they can make a reasonable profit on your manuscript, they will not take the risk of investing the resources into the project. So how, did, how easy does all that sound? It sounds like a long pain in the ass to me. But before the self-publishing revolution, this was the only route available to all aspiring authors. But what about that all coveted badge of respectability and professional approval with getting a, tradition, a traditional publishing deal? Sure, 
there is something to that, of course. I'm not going to deny that. But is it really worth it? Is it worth all the time it takes to finally get your book published, often years? Is it worth selling the rights to your book, often for decades, if not for life? Is it worth uh, your publisher having total creative control over your edits and your cover art? Is it worth it just to get a tiny percentage of the sales from your book? Uh, we'll explore those issues in just a little bit. But personally, I hold tremendous pride in the work I do on my own, um, by myself, and with the small team of editors and designers I've built. Uh, an author friend of mine recently just called me and he told me that my books look so good that they could stand on the shelf next to any other book out there. How do you think that made me feel? Like Awesome, right? And the truth is that once your book is done and published, virtually no one will care or even know who the publisher is. It's like going $100,000 in student loan debt because you want to have Cornell on your resume. If you've worked in the real world for any length of time, for most employers and for most jobs, they don't care what school you went to. And they sure as heck don't care what your grades were. They just want to know if you can do the job and deliver. So that's the real world. Most book buyers don't scroll down to the bottom of the page to see who published this or that book. I've personally bought thousands of books over my life and never once did I look to see who the publisher was. Remember, times are changing, okay? But surely you say, it must be more profitable to get a publishing deal. That's where the money is, right? Well, for some well-established authors, yes, and some breakthrough authors, yes. But even now, many well-established authors are self-publishing because one, they have a ton of followers already. Two, they can keep the full rights of their work. And three, they get to keep all the profits from their sales. But let's dive deeper on this one and talk about it, okay? Remember, traditional publishing houses like bookstores are for-profit businesses. Yes, your publisher may do a book launch and have a marketing campaign in place, but if your book is not selling and making everyone money right out of the gate consistently, the bookstore will return your books and uh, back to the publisher and they're going to ask for a refund. Bookstores will only allow your book to take up valuable real estate on their shelves for a small window of time. If the book is not moving and prompting reorders, it's pulled and sent back to the publisher for a refund. Then your book will just be left up on Amazon and other online retailers with little to no promotion or advertising. They're not going to continue to spend money promoting your book if the return on the investment isn't making sense. The publisher has moved on to the next darling manuscript in hopes for a bestseller. And when that happens, as it does for a lot, maybe most first-time authors, what then? You can start marketing the book yourself, but remember, the publisher still owns the rights for your book, and the majority of the money coming in through sales goes to them first. Traditional publishers pay between 5 to 15% royalty rates. In contrast, self-publishing on a platform like Amazon will pay up to 70% royalties. So with traditional publishing, you need to sell about six times as many books to match your potential royalties from self-publishing. Most aspiring authors hell-bent on getting that traditional publication uh, deal are so focused on things like scoring the deal and getting that validation and envisioning their book in the brick and mortar store that they fail to see the longer vision of what happens to their book after being out for several months, a year, or five. Five or 10 years from your book's release, that publisher will still own the rights to your book. If your book is not a hit, they will not be putting money into its promotion. And when it does sell, you will get a meager royalty every quarter or every six months. I've always viewed my books as an asset that I own. Yeah, self-publishing, it does cost me money up front in editing and design, especially to do it well. But after that, it's done. It's a finished asset that will bring me income for the rest of my life. And I work hard to create a portfolio of these assets that all work for me to put money in my pocket every month. And yes, Amazon pays every month, not every six months. So my first point here is to be aware of the golden ticket myth or the trap of the golden ticket. Considering how many aspiring authors there are out there and how fierce the competition is, Getting a publishing deal, let alone a profitable one, it's literally like winning the lottery. 
I want to talk now what I, about finally what I call the time trap. Many newbie writers assume that once they finish their manuscript and get it accepted either by a, an agent or even a publisher, that their book will be, you know, soon be released, maybe within just a few months. Uh, Well-known indie author Joanna Penn says, writing and editing will be the same regardless of how you want to publish, but then it might take you a year or two to get an agent, and then it might take a year to get a publishing deal, and then it will take likely be from six months to two and a half years before your book is launched. So it is a very, very slow process, which is crazy in a world where you can publish on Amazon and your book can be on sale within four hours and then you can be paid 60 days later. This brings me back to the podcast I heard by someone I admire, Graham Cochran. I, I don't know how long it took him to write his manuscript, but let's just say a year. I don't know how long it took him to get an agent that he liked and who also believed in his book idea. Let's just say a year. Let's say that all that took a year and a half to two years to reach that point. And I don't know how long it took to get the agent to pitch his book idea to the various publishers and then to finally get a deal or a contract right in front of him that Graham could actually sign. Let's say six months. I think that's generous. Well, let's say it's taken two and a half years to reach that point. He released his podcast in early April a few days ago where he says he hopes his book will come out sometime next year year. Why? Why would it take so long? Well, there's a lot of reasons. The publisher has other books ahead of him. The publisher is likely in the middle of other book launches and marketing campaigns. So Graham goes on a waiting list to the back, but that's okay because it needs to be assigned an editor, one hopefully he likes, one who understands him and his vision, and, and one who can retain his original writer's voice. Let's say he gets all that, there will then be a series of back and forth exchanges as the editor plows and plods through his rough manuscript. There may also be more than one editor, for example, one working on copy or line editing and another working on style and content flow. On top of that, his manuscript will get a cover designer assigned to it. This too will take time. The cover is one of the most important selling points, obviously, you know, for any book. It has to be good. It has to communicate not only what the book is about, but it will also need to sell the potential transformation the book is promising. The manuscript will also need someone to do internal layout and formatting. And this could be the cover designer, and it could be another person. And these are just some of the reasons why his finished manuscript can still take one or two years before it's released to the public. Most authors, especially first-time authors who choose the traditional publishing method, they're likely looking at four to five years before their book lands on uh, for sale on store shelves or even online. And my thought is, why? Why go through all that? Why wait that long for a book that's finished? Why give these gatekeepers all the control over your work? Why give them the exclusive rights over your work only to get tiny royalties that often dry up or disappear because the publisher stops investing in it? Why give them final control over your content and your cover art? And why wait four to five years for all that to happen? In the last four years, I've published five books and I have two more done and ready to launch soon. Now, I mentioned that one of my books is published by a traditional publisher. So let me share about that real quick. My first book, Help Someone I Love Has Cancer is self-published under our company, Rebecca's Hope. The fancy way to say this is that Rebecca's Hope is our imprint. We are the publisher. Now, the audio version of that book was published by a well-known uh, audiobook publishing house. So I still own the rights for the print and digital version, but I no longer do for the audio version. That's gone. At first, I was excited and honored that a known publishing company wanted to publish my little book. I also received an advancement check for $2,000. Not a ton of money, but it felt good to at least tell my parents I'm getting some money for my book. I know I'm a real author, but this it's not a big book, nor does it sell for a lot. In order for me to ever see a royalty payment for this book, I first need to sell enough copies to reach that $2,000 advancement. This might happen, but probably not for many years, especially in just the audio version. The truth is, I'll likely never see a dime or royalty payment from the publisher. 
The other thing not helping this book is the cover they designed for it. Compared to the cover I envisioned and the one I actually did myself, I think their cover sucks, but I had no say over it. It's done. You can see here my two covers. Mine is the original on the left. Theirs is the one on the right. Which one would you buy? Now, for my most recent book release, uh, my book is Epic Hope, I decided to learn how to do my own audio version. It took me about five days to read and record the entire book, which is 268 pages. I hired an audio professional from Upwork.com and paid him a hundred bucks to clean up all the audio files and make them up to standards for all the audiobook platforms like Audible and iTunes. It's gonna take me less than 10 sales to make that $100 back and every sale after that is just money in my pocket for life. That is an asset that I own forever. Now, this same cover art debacle that happened to me, it happened to the filmmaker who produced our documentary. He wrote, filmed, and produced a horror film a few years back. He submitted it to a traditional film distribution company and they liked it and offered him a deal. He took the deal. Prior to that, he had amazing cover art done for the film on his own, along with a really compelling trailer. Right before the film released, he was flabbergasted and pissed at how they mangled his cover, totally different trailer, and his promotional ads were completely different. It was all completely different than his original designs, and the new designs had little of anything to do with what the movie was about. And the artwork they produced was just bad. Oh, and even though his movie is selling online, he still has not received a dime from the distributor, okay? So let's talk about self-publishing, a better way for most authors. Sure, there are a lot of things to learn, at least if you wanna do it well. Sure, there are cons, like not having the financial power of a traditional publisher or the connections that they might have. Sure, you have to do a lot of the work yourself. Sure, you will need to spend some money out of your pocket up front. And yeah, you probably won't be taking your parents to their local Barnes and Noble and showing them your book on the shelf. Sure. But wait, when was the last time you were in a Barnes and Noble? How many are left? How about Borders books or B. Dalton books or Family Christian books or Book World? Yeah, they're all gone. It's not that people aren't buying books anymore, they are. It's just that they're not driving to bookstores for them. Most people are buying books online from the dozens of online book retailers, the king of course being Amazon. So check out the diagram here. Why not bypass all these hurdles of the traditional publishing world and take your amazing manuscript tr straight to the market? Why let one or a few strangers in some office determine when, how, or even if your manuscript is worthy for other people to see? Why not let the market determine for themselves? Why let everyone but you handle the life of your book? Why not learn how to do it all yourself and retain full control over the entire process, including how much money you get from sales? Is it easy? No. But few things in life worth doing, of course, are ever easy. But what about the quality of the book, you ask? Aren't self-published books cheesy? They can be, for sure. But then again, I own many traditionally published books filled with typos and terrible covers. If you know how to do it, you can write and publish a book as good as nearly any book in any bookstore and often better. But it all sounds so overwhelming, you say. There's so much to learn. And that is true. To do it right and to do it well, there are a lot of steps to learn. That's why it took me two years to write and publish my first book. It took me two years to learn it all because I was doing it all on my own. I read dozens of articles, blog posts, and watched countless YouTube videos, crawling through the confusion, all the conflicting opinions, and making plenty of mistakes along the way. I always wished I had a mentor or a coach or even just a friend I could hit up with all my questions. And that's why I created my online course that I call Newbie Book Writer, newbiebookwriter.com. I created the exact course I wish I had when I was starting out writing my first book. So I show you how to go step by step from your initial idea all the way to a beautifully published book that sells online. I also show you how and where to get your editor 
and your designer and all that stuff. So my course, it follows the exact plan and method I've used to write and publish five books with more on the way. Oh, and since I've already done the necessary research, I've done the trial and error, I've wasted on money that on things that seemed important, but were actually unnecessary. I've learned to overcome my fear of self-doubt. Since I've already done all that, you don't have to go through that. So Newbie Book Writer is what I call fluff free. We get down to business and you can write and publish your first book in half the time it took me, maybe even in just months. And there's lots of other perks too, like lifetime membership, one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, uh, member discounts for editors and designers and tons more. And it's not, it's all part of the course. It's not like upsells that I sell you on. Okay. So if you want to write and publish a great book, I can show you how. If you're on the fence about taking the author plunge, or if you're trying to write that first manuscript, but you're struggling, I'd encourage you to jump over to newbiebookwriter.com and take the free quiz I have there to discover your number one progress killer to writing and publishing that book idea. Uh, it's 100% free. And when you take that quiz, I'll email you a short document I wrote called The Five Fatal Mistakes Aspiring Authors Make a Lot. Uh, there's more freebies there to get your creative juices flowing. I, I show you a lot of free stuff to learn how to write a great book. Um, that's it for this video. I know it's a longer one, but I really felt compelled to speak into this issue that I know a lot of people wonder about. And I want to close by telling you about two ladies I know who are writing their dream book and choosing not to self-publish. One lady, we will call her Donna. She was a receptionist at a place I worked at about four years ago. Donna was writing a sexy romantic fiction book. Donna was dead set on pitching it to agents and eventually landing a book deal with a traditional publisher. She had grand visions of fame and glory for herself once she finally got discovered. The other lady I know, we'll call her June. Uh, she's also writing a manuscript, but her work was a nonfiction work that dealt with certain psychological issues. June, too, was set on pitching it to an agent and getting discovered by a well-known publisher. I tried to show both ladies the pros and benefits of self-publishing, but neither would have it. Donna even seemed to look down on me as though I were not a real author. June was humbler about it, but both were holding out for that golden ticket. Guess where both ladies are four years later? They're in the same place they were four years ago. Their manuscripts may or may not be done, but they're just sitting as unedited files on their computers still. Four years, I've published five books in that same time. So I think I know by now who the real author is. So don't be a Donna or a June. Or if you are, um, you don't have to give up on your dream of the golden ticket, but why not at least self-publish that first book now? I know how it is with your first manuscript. It's your baby. It's your blockbuster. It's your ticket into literary fame. I know. I know. Trust me. But guess what? The books you write, the more you do it, the better you get and the better your books become. And the more you realize that you were just getting started with that first work and there's so much ahead. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, remember to head over to newbiebookwriter.com. Take that free 30 second author quiz to see what it is that's really holding you back from finally publishing that book. And that's it. I'm Joel Hughes. I will see you in the next video.